I wrote a piece about this yesterday, but basically there is $15 million that has now been funded to go back to North Dakota uh, for emergency law enforcement related to the Dakota Access Pipeline from the federal government. So in the new budget that has passed, $15 million has been allocated to North Dakota for emergency law enforcement. And then the governor of North Dakota, Doug Burgum, sent a letter to President Trump on Sunday asking for an additional $38 million. And share this video, let's get this out there. $38 million should go to the governor, to North Dakota for emergency law enforcement because of the intentional human-made disaster that was the Standing Rock uh, opposition. So they are saying that protests or uh, water protectors in Standing Rock was an intentional human-made disaster which caused them millions and millions and millions of dollars in uh, costs that need to be paid back to them. So essentially what that means is since 15 million has already been allocated to be paid back to North Dakota for their law enforcement costs, over time, the insane military equipment, all this. Bottom line, they got paid back for brutalizing people exercising the First Amendment. And those who are, you know who's paying them? Us. Because the taxpayer ends up paying when things are budgeted out to things like North Dakota police. So essentially, the victims, the water protectors, unarmed, peacefully praying, are paying for their own brutalization. And that's happening right now in America. And you're seeing zero coverage about it anywhere. I, I was there seven times. I saw maybe once or twice in my eyesight, a water protector, uh, like throw a water b bottle at a police officer, um, do anything that could come off as aggressive, maybe twice in seven times. What I did see almost at every standoff I covered, and I covered dozens of them, were uh, police firing off tear gas, firing off rubber bullets, firing off freezing water and uh, sub zero in in uh, freezing temperatures, pepper spraying people, roughing up people. I did see that. And all these people, none of them had guns, none of them were armed. And most of the times where police were doing this, they were praying. Not antagonizing, but literally standing and chanting and praying. When the North Dakota governor says, quote, passionate causes Millions of dollars of anonymous protest funding, over $13.5 million in GoFundMe alone, and sophisticated and inflammatory social media campaigns have forever changed the nature, duration, and reach of unlawful protests. So really what's going on here is you have North Dakota, the governor, the federal government, defining what is appropriate protest in America. And that amounts to fascism. That amounts to fascism. When you, just like James Comey, came forward two days ago and said WikiLeaks is not a journalistic enterprise. When government decides who is and who is not a journalist. When the government decides who is and who is not protesters. Or who is not legitimate protesters. That's called fascism. When the government pays back at public police departments for brutalizing American citizens in protection of a private oil company, that's fascism. Meanwhile, corporate media, no coverage. This will go silently by. Thank you. Make America sane again. This will go silent, silently by. Nobody, nobody talking about it. By the way, separate from this, do you know right now the Department of Justice is prosecuting, prosecuting uh, somebody for the crime of laughing at Attorney General Jeff Sessions. At Attorney General Jeff Sessions' confirmation hearing, uh, there were some Code Pink activists who, you know, interrupted, uh, not physically, but verbally, 
taunted and did some uh, interruptions. And basically one of them laughed when I think uh, a congressman uh, complimented Jeff Sessions out loud. That person was removed and is now being charged and prosecuted for the crime of laughing at the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions. In Tennessee, they have been trying to create laws that outlaw protesting. This is beyond, beyond outrageous. It's scary. Because as we saw with the DNC election lawsuit, which I covered this week, and by the way, uh, just to put it out there, because I did mention Nico last night in a video I did, credit to Nico, uh, he has been covering the DNC election lawsuit, Nico House, that is. He's been covering the DNC election lawsuit from the beginning, so I did some reporting uh, last week. Frankly, I'm very busy, so I don't always know like who on the ground level is covering what. I didn't know that he was at the courtroom this and that, so credit to him for getting a lot of the information out uh, first and before anyone. So, basically... We've seen now that free and fair elections are under attack in this country. Free and fair elections are under attack. And now you have the DNC lawyer basically saying, yeah, if we want to, we could just go in back rooms with cigars and do whatever we want. Pick the candidate. So if we don't have free and fair elections and the candidate could just be picked over cigars and we can't exercise our First Amendment peacefully, and when we do that, we're brutalized, and then the federal government pays back the people brutalizing us, in this case, the Morton County Sheriff. What exactly do we have? That's not a democracy. That's, a fa that's fascism. And it's outrageous. Now, you could be a pro-pipeline person, you could be against pipelines, you could be one of these climate change deniers, or not. It, it's not about whether you agree with the pipeline or you don't. But... Everybody, whether you're progressive, conservative, a nut, or sane, should be protected under the First Amendment. That if you want to, even, even these crazy West Bapto, Bur uh, West Bapto church people, West Baptist or Westboro church people, if they want to go out and say vile things, the First Amendment protects that, even if I don't agree. I think there's certain places they should not be able to do that, like at funerals. But even if conservatives want to protest, I've had, I've had pro-pipeline people uh, stoking at me when I'm doing live reports in North Dakota. It's their first amendment right to do so. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be brutalized, and, they, and the people brutalizing them should not be paid for it. So the fact that the Department of Justice budget is giving $15 million back to North Dakota. So North Dakota had millions and millions of dollars in overtime because... They basically brought in a militarized police force to deal with peaceful protesters. North Dakota had millions and millions of dollars in costs because they ordered tear gas and pepper spray and grenades, which I reported months ago. I showed you the receipts for the grenades that they ordered. So when these people say, oh, there was no gr grenades, you're lying. No, there were. I showed you the receipts. Grenades, pepper spray, tear gas, uh, private drones flying. All these things cost money. So the federal government, meaning us, should, should pay the people who are breaking the law and breaking the First Amendment? It's unbelievable. Honestly, you, you would see this in third world countries. Essentially, what this really is, is don't you dare ever try to slow down when our oil pipeline is under construction. Don't you dare do that. Don't you dare ever go and encamp and slow down construction and chain yourself to machines and all that. How dare you slow down my profit margin? That's what this is. That's what man-made human disaster means. And by the way, this is dangerous not only for progressives but for conservatives. What happens, let me tell you, what happens eventually when there is something more deadly produced than guns? They could kill you quicker and more deadlier than a gun. And private industry decides we're, we're, we're placing our bet with that. And private industry starts paying off the same politicians they pay off now to do nothing about gun control. And as a result, uh, gun sales go down and guns are made less available to make this more deadly weapon available. 
and NRA people and gun second right second amendment rights people and gun fanatics protest. What happens to you if what you're protesting or what you believe is under attack? Are you going to be allowed to peacefully protest? Are you going to be brutalized? Do you think you should be? What happens when progressives and Republicans who are against these awful trade deals and are starting to protest and come out more and maybe create encampments against the economic policy? We saw Occupy Wall Street and the brutalization that went on there. What happens when it's not just progressives, but Republicans too? They're going to beat the shit out of all of us and then the government's going to pay them back for their costs? It's unbelievable. And it's unbelievable that no one is reporting about this. So, as I always say, it's not okay for the media only to talk about we can't normalize. Can't normalize Trump's racism. Yeah, we shouldn't normalize fascism. And that's what's happening. It's bigger than just what happened at the Dakota Access Pipeline. It's bigger than progressives versus pro-oil people. This is about freedom of speech, the right to peacefully assemble, freedom of religion, because a lot of these people were arrested while performing religious exercises like praying. If we don't have free and fair elections, if we don't have freedom of speech and right to assemble, let's just all move to Canada. You get free health care. People seem nice. Progressives can disagree on, on certain things. Some people are more frustrated about X versus Y, whatever. But we all need to unite against this. Because if peaceful people can't make a choice to go to Standing Rock, North Dakota, and if they're peaceful and unarmed and, and, and stand with Native Americans against a, a toxic crude oil pipeline going under the longest water, the longest river in, in America, if you can't do that without being brutalized, and if when you're brutalized, your government that represents you and you pay for, pays the people back for the brutalization, then we got a lot bigger problems, folks, than the DNC election lawsuit. And we have a lot bigger problems than getting a progressive in office and stopping neoliberalism. Because fascism, that's fascism. That's beyond just money and politics and corruption. That's fascism. And I'm not a religious person, but I am Jewish, and I know what fascism is. And it's not something, reason fascist dictators were, a lot, were able to rise and fool the people is because nobody stood up and fought back. Nobody in America and a lot of people let Adolf Hitler do what he did. Mussolini too. So, if you're going to do something, do more than press the share button. I'm going to post on Facebook the numbers you could call for the North Dakota governor, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, the White House, the House Budget Committee who passed this budget and gave North Dakota $15 million, the ACLU. If you want to organize a peaceful protest yourself, I will put the Army Corps address. I will put the Department of Justice address. You know where the White House is. Don't just sit by and let them trample on your First Amendment and basically let a pu the public government brutalize people on behalf of a private company and then have the people that they brutalize pay them back for it. That's not America. That's not progressive America. That's not conservative America. That's not America. I will follow up on this story. I've reached out to the Department of Justice. Shocker, Jeff Sessions hasn't called me back yet. Um, I have reached, back, reached out to the North Dakota governor. Same story. I'll continue reporting on this. Uh, if you go to TYT Politics, we have new videos up. I interviewed Melissa, Bay, Melissa Mays, a Flint resident and activist, about another unjust injustice. Now there's 8,000 uh, notices that went out. We're putting a tax lien on your home in Flint if you don't pay your poison water bill. Yeah, I'm not joking. So I interviewed her about that. I have an interview up with Nick Brana from uh, Draft Bernie. He founded Draft Bernie, which is trying to get Bernie to leave the Democratic Party. That's up on TYT Politics. Um, and I will be uh, doing some other, uh, other content uh, the rest of the day as well. So thank you for watching. Share this video. Hashtag no dapple. And I appreciate your support.